that was the uh, itinerant uh, English fellow who had hiked across uh, Australia or something like that? Mr. Bard. Mr. Bard. He didn't last very long, but uh, he was quite out of the mold and uh, just absolutely fascinated by him. Oh, he was a wonderful teacher. He was a wonderful teacher. And one of the things he did was have us all bring gunny sacks to class because we were making things with straw and uh, parents that had ranches were asked to fill the gunny sacks with hay. And then we made things out of those things. He was, he was a fine teacher. For some former students, memorable teachers were those from the lower school. I would think that the early grades were the formative grades. Uh, I was blessed by some wonderful teachers, uh, particularly a first grade teacher, Mrs. Dew, Mary Bonner Dew, who actually believed in me and uh, unlike my kindergarten teacher, did not call me up short for staring out the window uh, as I was known to do. And dear Mrs. Dew, I still have a very nice uh, card that she sent my mother summarizing uh, the first semester. Uh, she believed in me. She was a great shaping force. Staying still in the lower grades, third grade, uh, Mrs. Coverley. But she too believed in what might have been taken as a somewhat backward or quiet student. She, she believed uh, in me as well. had a teacher in, I think, the fifth grade, Ann Williams. And then the sixth grade teacher was Miss Miller. And uh, she'd come to every sporting event, follow us to Sugar Land football, and uh, just, you know, and I stayed friends with her until she died. She's just like another mom. Others recall special teachers from the upper school years. Elizabeth Payton taught Latin and uh, she spoke Latin to us uh, at least three days a week. Her passion was golf, and uh, we learned Latin numbers by doing golf scores <laughs> in Latin numbers. I enjoyed history with Ms. Donlan, who was absolutely superb, and she was also in charge of the yearbook, and I was the editor of the yearbook my senior year, and did both the editorial part and also uh, the business part, got the ads. And then um, Madame Suzanne Downs, who taught French, who was a World War II bride, came to the United States, was an absolutely wonderful French teacher and inspired all of us to learn not only about French history, but a lot about the customs and the food and the fashion of the people there. Some teachers inspired passion in a specific subject. There was a gentleman who's no longer here named Mr. Border Gray, who was here for a short period of time, and he was a really funny character and made history interesting. I loved history. Always loved history, still love history. Uh, I enjoyed Spanish and I enjoyed English. I loved to write, loved to write short stories. Mr. Socek was our uh, science teacher in middle school. He was just wonderful. Everybody loved and respected him and he was just a marvelous teacher. I remember vividly when he had us in class and took a cigarette and blew the smoke through the cheesecloth, and the cheesecloth was yellow. Spanish and English. Senora Rattery started me off. Este es mi cuaderno. <laughs> and uh, I lasted all the way through a graduate course in college in Spanish literature. Loved it all the way through. Thanks probably to Senora Rattery. Pat Foley was an art teacher who was remembered as a real character. If you weren't good, which I wasn't, he would make fun of you, but in a very um, funny way, and but would help you and welcomed you in his class, even though you weren't a good art student. And I took, I ended up taking wax for bronze for him during interim term, and that was um, 
really interesting. He was quite a gifted artist. I know he did several statues for A&M, and he's done some of the ones around campus. Hundreds of Kincaid students owe an interest in history to Art Goddard. He's a decorated villain, and every year he'd kind of do a reenactment of the war. And, I mean, he, he made you feel like you were, you were on the battlefield right next to him. He's a great storyteller. I think it gave a much keener interest in, in reading about it, to see it presented the way he did. And, uh, and he's really like that with everything, but I mean, particularly, with, you know, talking about World War II, because he's, you know, he's right there in the thick of it. A few Kincaid teachers carried an intimidating reputation. In fifth grade, we had a teacher that was very, very strict, Paige McCullough, and a brother of my first best friend in school told us that um, when we got to Mrs. McCullough's room, she was probably going to kill us. And of course, we believed it. I went home and I told my mother, I said, Mommy, I'm not going to school at Kincaid in the fifth grade. But in the fifth grade, it turned out that she was probably one of my most favorite teachers. When I got into high school, we had a little gal named Eva Hooks. Everybody scared to death of her. She and I were big buddies. And a history teacher named Miss Shrek that everybody scared of. And some people thought they were mean, they weren't mean. They could scare the dickens out of you, though. But I, I wasn't too scareable. <laughs> Miss Shrek was quiet the class as she used to throw erasers at you. <laughs> but I always sat right in front of them, so I, didn't, I never got hit. <laughs> Ann Tharp Clifford and others made English a favorite course. Miss Clifford was the English teacher who was fabulous, and her daughter graduated from Kincaid. She taught me how to write, and uh, I don't think there's anything more important than that, learning how to write. She had us write something every week. The subjects were varied. I remember her, she did her master's degree on, uh, on thinking up topics for high school English papers. And so we had a variety to do, and it, a writing has remained uh, an interest of mine ever since, and I certainly credit Ms. Clifford for that. I didn't really get any formal grammar and stuff in middle school, as Kincaid had done for their students. Um, I think I had probably um, the least self-confidence in that area and um, in the end through my teachers felt you know that I could write a good paper. When I got to college I realized just how much advanced I was over some of my fellow students. Even non-students in the Kincaid community learned lessons from Kincaid teachers. One or two I remember the most was Barbara Cooney, and she's going to retire this year. I learned uh, a lot from her history class, and she still had that uh, like thumb on you, on the students, and she still has it today. No monkey foolishness, you know, and, and I admire and respect her for that. One of the most memorable faculty members ever at Kincaid was J. Barry Moss. Mr. Moss, of course, that I know so many people talk about, was such a wonderful English teacher, too, and encouraged everyone. And um, I, who was not an A student, but when another English teacher had told me, you know, that I shouldn't even bother to take the AP, English test, he said, why not take it? And I placed out of all my English. I was a nursing student, so I didn't only had a year of English or something. And um, so I didn't have to take English. And he encouraged me to do that. Mr. Miles was, um, he was, uh, he taught religious subjects. So he was always trying to guide those kids in the, in the right direction too, as to being honest, being kind, and what have you. All Kincaid students realize that they owe a large measure of gratitude 
to their teachers. At Kincaid, we learned to study. We learned how to study. So therefore, we were able to cope with the work at college level, I think, in a very excellent manner. Of course, we griped about extra homework or what we thought was extra homework, and, and we were always having something to say, you know. But the reality was very, very clear when we got to the collegiate level.